everyone, I'm Kevin Davey from KJ Trading Systems, and here's what I'm algo trading in January 2023. First, our disclaimer, don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Treat all results as hypothetical, and make sure you read this disclaimer. Okay. So people are always asking me, hey, what kind of algos are you trading? What is your equity? What do your equity curves look like for your various systems? So I thought I'd address some of that right now since it's uh, the beginning of January 2023 and I thought I'd go through what I'm currently trading. First off, my portfolio for the month. Now, keep in mind, all my strategies are automated they're all algo strategies. I don't use discretion. I just rely on the buy and sell rules of the strategy and let them take the trades. And all the strategies were developed using my trademarked strategy factory process. I also teach that process. But that's what I've been using for years to build strategies. And it works pretty well. And the strategies I trade on a month-to-month -month basis are selected from a group of about 175 strategies that I've created over the years that I monitor. I call it a bullpen. It's kind of, I select some and uh, certain ones get selected each month. Now, I break it up into different markets and here's how that looks. Six grains, five currencies, four energies, four interest rates, four metals, six softs and three stock indices so that all together i'm trading 32 different strategies and i should mention all the strategies and their performance is uncorrelated so even if they're trading the same market i've looked at that to prevent you know me trading from a uh, trading say three different crude oil strategies that all act the same so i try to be diversified by being uncorrelated and you can see I pretty much have strategies in every major market sector. I put a little bit more in the grains and the softs because they really tend to be uncorrelated. You know, coffee isn't really correlated at all with cocoa for the most part or orange juice if I was trading it. And uh, I always go a little lighter on the stock indices mainly because... I'm probably like a lot of you, you have retirement money and it's probably long stocks. And so I don't want to be too focused in one sector. So I, I lighten up a little bit on the stock indices. But in general, you can see it's pretty well balanced. Um, you know, the energies, interest rates and metals, I only do four because those tend to be a little more volatile as far as performance. So I try to keep that volatility down. But that's currently what I'm trading. And then if you look at each individual sector, I'm trading three Kansas City wheat strategies. They're all different strategies, different bar sizes, that kind of thing. One soybean, one corn, one lean hogs. In the currencies, I'm doing a British pound, a Bitcoin. Uh, you could say, hey, that's not really a currency, but you know, where does Bitcoin, as far as a futures market, fit? Uh, it, people treat it as a currency, so that's why I put it there. One dollar index, which is traded on ice. It's kind of a basket of a whole bunch of different currencies. One Swiss franc, one Japanese yen. And then looking at the energies, I'm doing three heating oil strategies and one crude oil strategy. And then interest rates, I'm doing uh, two of the 30 year bonds, one of the, that should say five year notes. There is no 25 year note and one of the two-year notes. Looking at metals, two gold, two silver. I'd really like to be trading copper, but uh, copper didn't make the cut, or even platinum. Gold and silver tend to move together, but these strategies, again, are uncorrelated, so the performance of all four of them should be unique. And then in the softs, I'm trading three coffee, two cotton, and one cocoa. And finally, the stock indices, I'm trading two mini S&P and one mini NASDAQ. 
And in some cases, instead of the minis, I'll actually trade the micros. That's a little bit better for like position sizing. And you can do some different stuff with that. So, uh, but basically it's still the S&P and the NASDAQ that I'm trading. That's my portfolio. So I thought I'd take a look at just some sample equity curves. I picked one or two from each of the major sectors, just so you can get a sense of what I feel are decent equity curves. Because, it, you know, you see a lot of equity curves out there and, and you think, oh, wow, I have nothing like that. Well, this might change your mind a little bit. And again, I want to point out that all of these equity curves were generated with my strategy factory process. And the results I'm going to show are without position sizing. So it's usually one contract. There's a couple markets that are multiple contracts, but for the most part, this is just one contract performance throughout the history. I don't vary it. And remember I mentioned this at the beginning of the disclaimer, treat all the results that you see as hypothetical. That's really important. Just because I'm showing you this and I say, hey, this is real time, doesn't mean if you were to start trading it, you'd have similar results. Doesn't mean I'll have similar similar results. It's always hypothetical. And that's an important distinction to make. Okay. Um, and I'm going to show you both in sample kind of walk forward optimization, which is an out of sample optimization technique. And they're all going to show slippage in commission because I think that's really important to include in the equity curves right from the beginning. So the white part of the curve is the walk forward out of sample and the light blue part shaded part are the real time live results. Now I mentioned in sample a minute ago, the in sample results are not shown on this chart. So all these charts are all either walk forward out of sample or live real time. The initial optimization results, they're not even shown on these charts. So here's one, this is lean hogs. This one I've been trading for quite a while, or I developed it quite a while ago. I haven't been trading it necessarily the whole time. This was back in 2015, and you can see uh, it had a, a pretty long stretch where it really wasn't doing much. And so what I do here is I monitor the strategies, and then when they start to pick up performance, then they might be included in the next round, uh, which I look at monthly, to actually be traded. So I didn't necessarily trade it the whole blue area, but I am trading it now. And you can see it, it's done pretty well, especially probably the last year or two. So that's in lean hogs. Here's one of the Kansas City wheat. And uh, this is a, a little bit newer of a strategy. It had a great run uh, last March when uh, there was the Ukraine-Russian war started. Uh, some of these grain strategies just popped like crazy but you can see over time it's done pretty well so that's one of the three I'm trading there and then here's a dollar index I mentioned a dollar index strategy and it goes through good times and it also goes through some some prolonged drawdowns right now it's uh, performing pretty well and that's why I'm trading it here's a one of my, uh, or the only crude oil strategy, I have a whole bunch of crude oil strategies. I'm only trading one of those this month. Now, these real-time results go back to somewhere in 2012. So this has a long history. I developed this system over 10 years ago. And you can see, yeah, it's kind of chugged along. It's had drawdowns, no doubt, especially when you look at the scale over at the right. Uh, you know, it's getting close to $300,000 in single contract profits over the last 15 years. So it's done really well. And last year, the performance of this was just off the charts as far as how well it did. Hopefully, 2023, or at least in January 2023, it'll do that well too. Here's one of the 30-year uh, bond strategies I'm trading. And again, uh, it's been doing well lately, and uh, this is one of my newer strategies. The interesting thing here is 
uh, since the 30-year bond and all interest rates, interest rates had been going down for years and years. So if you had a long bias in the futures market with these, that you probably did pretty well. Well, except for the last year where you really wanted to go short. So what's interesting about this is this system was created back before 2022 and it used mostly data that was in a bull market, yet it performed pretty well in this bear market that we're starting to have now in interest rates as they go up. And I think that's kind of interesting because I really almost expected some of my interest rate strategies just to flat out break when this bear market in interest rates started. So it's not the case here. Here's one in gold. Uh, you see there's a, a, quite a few flat periods here, and uh, it just sits on the sidelines at times, and so it'll just be off. And you can see, uh, I don't know, it's probably the last couple months at least, uh, it hasn't even been trading. So it might not even trade this next month. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's there, and if it wants to make a trade, it will. So I have a, quite a few strategies like this that just are... Uh, I describe them as lying in wait. You know, they're just waiting for the right opportunity and then they trade. And if they don't see it, they're just flat. Uh, not a bad way to go. Other strategies I have, they're always in the market. So I have a mixture. Here's uh, one of my coffee strategies. And uh, you can see it has pretty good uh, real-time performance. And again, it, it has a flat period in its walk forward test where it really wasn't doing a whole lot. And then uh, lately it's kind of taken off. And then finally, here's an ES strategy. And um, long or short, you know, uh, almost all my strategies go long or short. It's done pretty well. You can see in the past uh, year or so, it's been pretty volatile though. It's uh, the squiggly lines are not as tight. They're a lot more... Uh, pronounced and uh, that fits in with most stock indices they've just been a lot more volatile so those are some of the equity curves I'm trading and again I want to point out these are real equity curves these are real systems I'm trading and notice these strategies all have drawdown and flat periods and again some are always in the market some are rarely in the market now you and they're far from perfect I'll be the first to admit, these strategies are not perfect by any means at all. And you might say, uh, that's a bad thing. But what I focus on is that blue period. And I like having good real-time performance. That's after I've developed the system. So I'm not making any changes to the system at, the, at that point when that blue area starts. And if it's performing well, that to me is the real key to success because it shows it's been performing well in real time and again some of these go back though the crude oil strategy goes back about 10 years of real-time performance and it's hard to argue with that as far as hey this isn't a good strategy even though it has drawdowns and flat periods now you could say hey I see your equity curves Dude, I can build a lot better curves. And you know what? I totally agree with you. Of course you could. Anybody could build better back tests than what I show in the white. I mean, you see some of those flat periods and some of those drawdowns? It's, a, it's kind of a joke if, if the goal was building a better back test. But guess what? Building a better back test and building a great looking back test is not the goal here. Most people who try algo trading get confused and they think that is the goal because that's what they're working on. That's what they're trying to develop, a strategy with a nice back test. But a perfect back test, a great looking back test and doing things to get there are all bad things to do. Just remember that building a better back test is not the goal. The real goal is good risk adjusted performance in real time. So it's good performance in that blue 
that light blue area that I show. That's the real key. And that you can't fake, you can't do while you're developing the system. It all comes after. So it takes years to build up that data. But if you have a process that you're developing strategies that you know leads to that, kind of like I do, then you have confidence that you can put new strategies into play, even with short out of uh, real time performance, you could still do them. So the, the big question is, hey, does this work for others? Yeah, it works for me, obviously. Uh, in a word, yes, it does. Those two strategies I just showed you were actually developed by some students of my strategy factory. And altogether, my students that we have a club where we submit strategies and share strategies. We have over 500 strategies that have worked in real time for at least six months. That's pretty cool. I don't know anyone else out there that's showing algo results with a course with actual student results and that many of them. But we are. If you're interested in the course, go to my website, kgtradingsystems.com. Click on the workshop tab up at the top. You get all the information you want. Okay, well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment. I respond to all comments. Let me know. What do you think? Do you think I'm crazy for trading 32 strategies? Or do you think I'm crazy for trading three Kansas City wheat strategies or three coffee strategies? Do you think I'm balanced? Let me know. What are you doing? I'd be curious. Thanks for watching. I'm Champion Trader Kevin Davey. Have a great day and hopefully a great trading January.